We've seen some of the guys who got caught on the show come up with some pretty stupid excuses. But I hope you're ready to feel the stupidity since I'm gonna go through the dumbest of the dumb. It's a race at the bottom as we delve into some really interesting minds. The first loser on our list is Edward Hollingsworth. Imagine this super big guy being weirdly playful as he walks up the driveway. Yeah, my instant reaction would be to lock all the doors, windows, and get out my trusty gun. And also barricade the doors with furniture for good measure because he doesn't look like he's gonna stop. Well, our setup at the sense to at least lock the door. The door. So why'd you lock the door? What'd I tell ya? Guys, I wouldn't want to be even in the same room as this guy. Like, I can smell him through my screen, and let me tell you, it's definitely not a good thing. Ugh, it's like if baloney and mold had a love child. Anyway, before the guy even entered the house, the cops rounded him up and arrested him. Now, you must be thinking, where's my boy Chris? Well, sadly, he was busy with something else, and they had to rush him before anything more could happen. Well, like all these sorts of dudes who have been on the show, he basically rushed off to the police station for interrogation. And right when he sat down, dude changed personalities like you or I changed shirts, and this new persona sure loved excuses. What he came up with was simply unbelievable. My best friend's mom is dying of cancer. That's not a real excuse for it, but... <laughs> yeah, you're damn right it's no excuse. Like, come on, man. Seriously, dude, if he said it was his own mom who wasn't well, Maybe we'd have some sympathy. But lying about his best friend's mom? A step too far. I bet that poor lady was just fine at home, chilling, and now she's probably stressed because of this jerk's lame attempt to weasel out of trouble. Not cool, Edward. Not cool at all. But the gravity of the situation was quick to dawn on him. Like, he suddenly realized he messed up big time, and duh, you're right on the money, but it's a little too late for you to feel bad about it, you big old chunk. Maybe you could have felt bad before you got into the house, turned around, and took a long look in the mirror. A very big mirror. That. Here's some much needed wisdom, idiot. No matter what sort of messed up fantasies you got swimming around that in that head of yours, bringing them out in real life is beyond disgusting. I mean, what was he thinking when he struck up a convo with a person like the setup? Dude sealed his fate as soon as he sent the first message, and he got exactly what he deserved. Sorry, no matter what happens to him, he's getting no sympathy from me. And the people in the comments literally took the words out of my mouth. One guy commented saying how fantasies become realities when you make the decision to get in the car and drive all the way to a place you really shouldn't be. What I tell you guys, this loser really thought the cops would just buy his stupid excuse. And don't even get me started on his fake crying. Just look at this. Again, fantasy takes of reality. I've never done really anything. You should have just given up this sort of life and gone to acting school. Since that's about the only thing he's done right up at this point. Dude's gunning for an Oscar to put up this sort of act. But sadly, ain't no rewards to be found here. Well, unless you count the cuffs on him as an award. I know, I sure do. But this next comment I came across was all I needed for validation, honestly. That whole, my best friend's mom is dying of cancer bit is cringier than everything else combined. You can hear it in his voice, man. He's been rehearsing that line in his head the entire way to the police station. Well, let's leave everybody's favorite Oscar nominee behind. Who's ready for excuse number two? Well, our next weirdo for today is Christopher Urban. Absolute audacity of this guy. As soon as he entered the house, this absolute monster felt so at home that he straight up went ahead and started washing his hands and stuff. Like, no hesitation at all. Makes you wonder how many freaking times he's done this before to be so calm and composed, especially at some random stranger's house. Also, especially a place with someone like the setup around. Thankfully, this time things were about to play out differently than he expected. Paper towels right over here. Just grab a paper towel. That's classic Chris for you. I mean, there's just something about his entrance. You can't explain what, but whatever it was, he nailed it. Imagine being at a house to meet this chick and this man who you think could be your dad, and he shows up and hands you a paper towel. That's gotta be emasculating as hell. Dude's life probably flashed before his eyes, too. I mean, why else do you think he took forever to wipe his hands? He went on and on and on, and Hanson finally lost his patience and asked him this. Chris. Chris. Yeah. And who did you come to see? Yeah, he had to start somewhere. If not, this prick would have probably rubbed his hands clean down to the bone. When he finally answered... Way too young for you. Yeah. Then why did you come here? No shit, Sherlock. I mean, wow. Picture perfect gentlemen over here, you guys. Do wanted Hanson to believe that he came all this way just to remind the setup that he was too old for her. Uh-huh. Sure. Talk about meaning that could have been an email. Would have saved him some gas, some time, effort, and uh, oh yeah, jail time as well. But hey, that's the beginning of his stupidity. That's because when Chris asked him to take the skins out of his pocket, which let me remind you, he denied having in the first place, dude had something else planned out. I brought this, but this is really watered down. You can even test it. 
That's way watered down. Way watered down. Way, way watered down. What is it? You can see how hard he was trying to sell what he was doing. He had all the grace of a used car salesman, but good effort, buddy. Obviously, Chris wasn't convinced, which is why he came up with his next excuse. And trust me, I haven't seen anything like it on the show before. You look at me, I didn't even take a shower. If I was coming to do something like that, I would have I would have taken a shower, you know? I mean, that's that's the first thing you do. Yeah, he actually said that. Now, I have no idea if he was telling the truth or not, but that was one hell of a way to convince Chris. And trust me, listening to this, a ton of fans of the show had the laugh of their lives. Look at me! I'm so dirty. Lamau. Yeah, I agree on that one. Chris was so amused that he actually had to ask how old he was after listening to that ridiculous excuse. And just like you expected, Christopher went on and 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 on. He desperately tried every trick of the trade to clear his name. I did because I didn't want to hurt somebody's feelings. I didn't want somebody to be absolutely hurt, okay? And sit there and go, oh my gosh, you didn't show up. Uh, so suddenly you're worried about someone else's feelings now, huh? Well, I'd say better late than never, but we both know it's far too late. Come on, Chris, we know you're shitting bricks. So why don't you own up and get done with it instead of making a mess of yourself? However, Christopher continued to rant and explain how he was someone who believed in conscience and would never do something crazy with the setup. Anyway, by the time Chris realized that our man of the hour would never snap out of his denial, he decided to finally reveal his true identity to him. And with that, the cameras popped out and Christopher had nowhere left to run. Welcome to leave and take your stuff with you. But if there's anything else you'd like to say, um, please. He desperately tried to cover his face, but again, at too little, at too late. In hindsight, just like this viewer right here, I also think Christopher displayed every stage of excuses, defensiveness, guilt, and finally pleading his case. Fun to watch, but again, it's not gonna get the guy anywhere. Bye-bye, Christopher. You give all the other Chris's of the world a bad name. I bet our Chris wasn't too pleased having to deal with a namesake like this guy. But we've only scratched the surface of the depths of stupidity we're gonna be delving into. This next guy's a prime example since he couldn't come up with anything else but this. You know that the house is for sale? Oh, that this house is for sale? Yes. <laughs> uh, yeah. When nothing else is selling, what better than to put the Sting house on sale? I'm sure Chris never saw that coming, and he was so surprised that he had to ask him this. What made you thought that this house is for sale? I heard about it. There he goes again. So, this guy, Aladdin Shimon, had the audacity to blame some friend of his who led him to believe that this house was on sale. Like, yeah right, completely believable. Do you see any realtors around here? No. But hey, Chris wasn't backing down, wanting to get to the bottom of it and test Aladdin's creativity. However, every single explanation that Aladdin gave landed him in deeper and deeper trouble. Yes. And what's the friend's name? His name is Hisham. And what's his phone number? Surprisingly, Alanin did manage to come up with a phone number, and it was pulled out of his ass, sure, but gotta hand it to the guy. What did Chris do? Dialed it up right in front of the dude. I'm sure this prick never saw that coming. Uh, hopefully. Okay, well, that first one is Cynthia, it's not Hisham. Okay, so. so let's try the other yes. one. You could feel Aladdin's tension a mile away. The man was sweating bullets, knowing his big fat line was about to be busted. <coughs> And I have no idea whose number he actually gave out, but to add insult to injury, nobody answered the call. Going by the look on his face, it seems that he knew he was dead to rights from the second Chris pulled out his phone. But with that sorry display out of the way, Chris wanted some real answers. And what would you think of the house? What did you say? What do you think, think of the house? house? Very nice. Yeah. And how many of it are for? By this time, Chris realized that Aladdin could go on forever with this little act, and so he decided to ask him one more time. I think now is the time for you to tell the truth. Why did you really come here? Uh, to see, uh, what's her name? Uh, Sarah. Sarah. Yes. And then came the truth. See, it only took that much to get it out of him. And just when you thought he'd cooperate, Aladdin blew everyone away with yet another award-winning performance. You say, great, good girl. Ah, the drama. Dude's taking a page out of the sitcom playbook, I see. Old strategy, too. I mean, how else do you think he came up with the idea of pulling this sort of stunt? How convenient, ain't it? Just pass out. Dudes crack the code. Call off the cops, you guys. Aladdin's won. He can't go on no more. But seriously, his fake faint was so terrible that I couldn't help but cringe. I'm honestly disappointed in him for not coming up with a better escape plan. Like, Duke could have some decency and at least try to make a run for it. Anyway, they gave him some water and surprise, surprise, he was miraculously all better. But Chris kept drilling in with questions without skipping a be like a bloodhound following a trail. But Aladdin, well, he really thought he'd pull off a master escape. But oh, how wrong he was. Chris ain't letting him off the hook that easy. And you won't believe it, this loser pulled the same stunt again. Like, you can't make this stuff up, you guys. But guess what? Chris didn't even blink and kept firing away with questions. Ah, what a character this guy was. Dude can't be real. Ah, uh, it's just... Uh, uh. 
Yeah, it looks like Aladdin was hit with some kind of fast onset narcolepsy that kept sending him into these fainting spells. And what was Chris up to while this was going? Well, his reaction was priceless. He was so unbothered by the drama unfolding before his eyes and was like, come on, man, get it out. And really, can you blame him? Aladdin's bizarre acting was comical. Like, he could have performed with the best slapstick actors around. Like, get this guy and Charlie Chaplin in a room together, seriously. He kept up that little activist till the bitter end, but guess what? Everyone could see through his BS. And oh, the internet had a blast with this one. People love seeing these dudes floundering around to try and get out of trouble as it is, but this guy was next level. Whether it worked in his favor or not, he had fans of the show laughing right away. One of my fave dumbass excuses predators. Thank you for giving me a laugh at the end of a long day at work. Some viewers also enjoyed how Aladdin really stalled the whole sting, expecting some genie to appear out of nowhere and rescue him. But hey, he wasn't entirely wrong, because there indeed was a bunch of genies waiting for him right outside the door. And that realization must have hit him real hard. Unlike this next guy who had a hard on like no other. You see, Chuck Harding, and no, I'm not making the last name of his up, found himself in the wrong place at the wrong time. We'll check around here, okay? Hey, how are you? Okay. Why don't you have a seat right around that stool there? And hey, looks like Aladdin wasn't the only one interested in real estate. Uh, possibly selling the house or something. Selling the house? Yeah, I have a problem here was that Chuck couldn't make up his mind. His story got so twisted in so many ways that I don't even think he could even remember where he began. Somebody get this guy working at one of those mall pretzel stands. He'd fit right in. Now, I don't blame his age for the lapse in memory, because Chuck was in his prime when it came to some of the disgusting things he was into. And while he sat there spinning lies over lies, Chris threw his absolute disaster of a cover story in the trash right from the beginning. Now, help me understand this. Why would anyone want to go into an online chat room, which was meant for a specific purpose that definitely wasn't selling houses to sell his house. I mean, they got Realtor.com for that, right? Well, let's not be too hard on Hard Chuck, and yeah, that was one of his many screen names, can't say I'm surprised, because the dude was so engrossed in his explicit conversations that he didn't even realize what kind of real estate he was looking for. Yeah, yeah and how, how much are you selling it for? $25,000. $25,000, that's quite the bargain. I know, right? Props for sticking to your guns, Chuck, but like, come on. Chris, on the other hand, waited and watched on. He only wanted to see how far Chucky Boy would spin his web of lies before he cracked and came clean. However, Chuck showed no signs of stopping, and that's when Chris decided to take charge. The only problem with that story is, is that I have the transcripts of your conversation with Luke. Despite Chris showing him enough evidence to get him convicted six ways to Sunday, Chuck couldn't stop himself from giving more and more ridiculous excuses. Well, I have another person that uses my computer. Another person. Right. Come on, Grandpa. Seriously? I mean, you can't even keep track of all the lies here. Or just cut the shit and come clean. But Chuck was in no mood to confess. However, he did share what he did for a living. What do you do for a living, Chuck? I'm retired now. You're retired. Although he was retired, the man was anything but tired. You see, Chuck was pretty busy throughout his life. He worked as a travel agent for 13 years, flew high with Frontier Airlines for nearly two decades, drove buses for the elderly and handicapped for five years, tried his luck teaching freshmen in high school, did a stint with the Catholic Church for two and a half years, and even served in the Air Force for four years. Oh, dude definitely had a wide portfolio, I'll tell you that much. But man, I feel so sorry for this grandpa, honestly. At an age where he should be enjoying his retirement with grandkids, he was trying to get into the pants of people around the same age as his grandkids. And guess what? After three little follow-up questions from Chris, the truth finally came out. Well, we were almost there, but not quite. It was like pulling teeth to get to the real story from this guy, I swear. But leave it to the goat to finally get the job done. Well, he was in the chat room, so... An excuse, but he at least accepted it was him who was chatting. While Chuck tried his best to deflect, this next guy had the curiosity of a cat. And I mean, you know what they say about that. And why do I say that? Well, check this out. It's a girl. I don't know how old, that's why I'm here. I'm just. Ah, uh, this big loser. He's trying to play it cool, saying he was curious about the person he was gonna meet. Yeah, right, like we're gonna buy that excuse. I mean, seriously, I don't think he could have come up with a more ridiculous story. But wait, gets even juicier. He had the guts to not even deny that he was having these filthy convos with random folks online. Oh, unfortunately for us, his Playboy days wouldn't last for much longer. He was gonna get caught sooner or later, and man, that is a piece of work that he was. However, Chris ended up nailing him. When he confronted him, the guy couldn't come up with squat. Not surprising at all, really. And get this, his lame response did the work spilling the beans for him, and now Chris got all the dirty needed to send that fool straight to prison. Good riddance, buddy. Well, yeah, you're absolutely... You're absolutely right. I mean, why take the chance? Yeah, exactly. Why take the chance, am I right? You have so much free time in your life and you just want to see how your luck plays out? 
What? Well, it looks like his luck ran out. Might be the first, but out of all the losers we've seen on the show, Dan might be the first one who wanted to apologize. You'd go, okay, you know what, maybe this is all just a misunderstanding. But what he said right after that changed my whole opinion about him. It's just sad to think that he thought he had it in the bag until this very next moment when he threatened the camera crew. Ah, well, you better, I'll shove that camera down his throat. I don't think you're gonna wanna do that. Why is that? absolute state of this loser. Who does he think he is talking like that, especially where he's at? Honestly, that's the exact reason why he deserved to be in prison for far longer. People on the internet were going absolute ham on this guy. Take a look at these comments. I'd like to say that pretty much I think you have it all wrong, but your point's well taken. This is the perfect example of a guy who should have just said nothing at all. Pretty sure he lost about 10 IQ points purely from being within the schmuck's radius. Honestly, I think I'm starting to lose some IQ at this point. That's why I'm here. I'm just curious. The way he delivers that line is so perfect. It's not the funniest part, but it's absolutely the thing that keeps me coming back here. You see, he was just curious, guys. Nothing else. Definitely nothing else to see here, folks. Move along. But he for sure will shove a camera down your throat if you even ask him anything else. Now we got one last absolutely idiotic escapade coming our way. Rob Klein might not seem that old, but he was definitely a beast online, no doubt. The things he said on the internet were so disgusting that I'm not going to be able to repeat them here. I'm sure that gives you all the context you'll need. But back to the episode, where this loser's dream of getting right to business was shattered when Chris came out and asked him why it was there. And you know what he said? Well, it's really not that complicated, actually. He just came over to inform the setup that, uh, well, he wasn't gonna come over. Yeah, I know, I'm as stunned and silent as the rest of you. I'm not making this up, you guys. This was actually his excuse. Don't believe me? Roll the clip. I was actually just gonna stop by here to let her know that I wasn't gonna be here because I have to go meet with other people. Told ya. Think about it. He drove all the way here just to say that he had other plans with his friends. And here I thought Christopher Urban was the king of meetings that could have been an email. But Rob Klein's got him beat by a mile. And this viewer had pretty much the same idea. Not just that, as soon as the cameras came out, this loser actually held his hand out for a handshake. Like, nothing actually happened, but talk about being delusional as hell. What's more, the exchange Chris had with him as he was leaving the house honestly gave me a headache. I can see why it's hard to believe. I can see myself why it's hard to believe. So why should I believe you? Ugh, that smirk on his face. I'd like to punch it off of him and wipe it off him. But this loser's story doesn't even end there. Back at one of the station's interrogation rooms, the cops asked him if he had ever shared any explicit videos from his laptop. And you know what he said? Not as far as I know. But in the event that the officers do find something, they should keep something in mind. Maybe it was his brother who did it. Yeah, why not? Just push everyone under the bus on your way to hell, why don't you? This dude's definitely in the running for the Brother of the Year award. But seriously, what he had to say here kind of triggered siblings from all around the world. Imagine finding out your brother got arrested for this and then tried to blame it on you. The amount of excuses these losers can come up with on the spot is honestly kind of shocking. Thankfully, none of them are ever any good at it. But there's more where this came from. You see, Dustin, Dusty, the Dusty boy here, couldn't even walk on assist. He had to use a cane at all times just to get around thanks to his serious motor disability, Cerebral Palsy. But of course, before you feel sorry for him, uh, again, look at the title of the TV show here, a few context clues here and there. Casey, the setup, actually felt sorry for him as he struggled to make his way to the door. But then she remembered what his intentions were and all that sympathy was instantly gone. When you listen to him talking, he really is no different. This was the same guy who had asked if he could be your first. Jeez, pretty bold given his physical condition. Pretty ambitious indeed, Dusty. Also, this dude was hell-bent on having his way. Can you believe that he actually drove five hours to act on his own disgusting thoughts? And guess what? Wasn't even the first time he'd done something like this. Really sad to see this idiot exploit his disability for his own benefit. He was willing to stoop so low just to get busy with something. Also, then there's his screen name. Wrestling Dude Ace 10. Why can't people spell? Either way, by the looks of it, he was terminally online as well. One viewer apparently knew him from a chat room where he would often claim to be an indie wrestler. Oh, he was a wrestler indeed. Just more of a pathetic one. Viewer said that he couldn't believe Dustin was disabled until he appeared on the show. Looks like Dusty Boy knew how to deceive people. Probably something he picked up to compensate for his own weaknesses, of which there are many. But what you're about to see next will only disgust you even more. Nothing. Wow. So I'd be your first at everything? Yeah, that's also not all. He then went on to describe all the things he wanted to do to her before making an extremely bizarre request, and that's saying something for this show. Send me a pair of your panties. What you just heard is the epitome of perversion. The definition of degeneracy. And the very embodiment of... Uh, really? Guy wanted to indulge in some pretty twisted things. What makes it worse is that he wanted the decoys sister to be involved too. Barely imagine the extent of this sicko's fantasies. Also, if you're at least trying to 
people. Maybe you'd bring some chocolate, some flowers, maybe a puppy. And this guy brought, uh, well, roll the clip there. Bring the razors? Yeah. You heard that right? The idiot actually brought an electric razor with him. Sure, you can guess what he wanted to do with it. Now, you've seen Casey confront some crazy people as a setup for the show, but this one's gotta be her best. She urged him to spill the beans and elaborate on his intentions, and that's when Dustin said this. It's just easier to explain it. Well, you know what, Dustin? Points for being spontaneous, time to break the ice, and of course, Chris decided to do it in style. So I hate to be the bearer of bad news. Chris came in like a nightmare. And what did good old dusty dust 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 boy do? Well, he blamed the decoy for leading him on. Of course, Chris wasn't buying this expectedly classy act. She asked for it. She asked for it. She didn't ask for it. You sent it to her. Yeah, like I said earlier, Dustin was summoned with a heck of a facade. One viewer actually pointed out that Dustin might have expected to get off scot-free because of his physical condition. But, yeah, you know, that's that's not really what happened because the hammer of justice is all in April. After being found guilty, Dustin spent about two years in a Kentucky prison. That sentence was extended to eight years when he was convicted again. Truly, Dustin, you're a six-piece chicken McNobody. But this next guy, who also had a medical condition, was not only a repeat offender, but could only muster up one thing to say in his defense. You know, you look familiar to me. Oops. Okay, I think that about sums it up, because, oops, you did it again. Michael Seabird is one of the special few who got caught twice by our main man, Chris. Now, if you're a diehard fan of the show, I'm sure you can come up with a few more repeat offenders. But Michael, eh, he was built different. He had the balls to meet another chick between court hearings. What happened in court on Friday? He said more time. Call it desperation, ignorance, degeneracy, or just plain being thirsty, but there's absolutely no excuse for him to be at the stink house. Not like Michael didn't try to get away. When Chris started tightening the news, he pretended to have some kind of panic attack or something. Now you know. But come on, who are you trying to fool, Michael? Give it up already. Either way, there's no way Chris is gonna let you off the hook again. You knew this was wrong. I know. And that you would never, ever do it again. What did Michael have to say, though? Well, he put on a sad riddle face and started to apologize over and over. All for the second time. Eh, I guess some people never learn. I guess it takes more than a jail term and a couple of hours of community service to get it through Michael's thick skull. But here comes another guy who knew he was in the wrong, yet still showed up at the sting house anyway. How are you doing today? My house is your house. Wanna come in? Come in. Myself. Well, well, Jesse Velez had no idea that his dopey smile would be wiped from his face. You see, while he was putting on this cheerful act, deep down, Jesse was suspicious. And kinda ugly too. Right from the get-go, he walked in and immediately locked the door behind him, ready to get down to some business. Then he kept looking around like he was expecting someone or something to pop out of it. It's like he already knew he was caught. Heck, he was so on edge that despite knowing how old the setup was, he asked him this. <laughs> Oh, well, it's one thing that the setup sure didn't look his age, but you can't deny the fact that Jesse had his guard up. From speaking in monotone to crossing his arms, he just couldn't get comfy. Jesse even expresses concern to the setup by saying this. No, no. So you want to stay here? Not really. Setup was trying to distract him as much as possible, but Jesse wouldn't snap out of it. Now, for someone so cautious, his reaction to Chris was pretty blunt. What's happening? Nothing. Yeah. If it was just to hang out, then what were you doing sharing those pics online? That's when Jesse then came up with the brilliant and totally original idea to simply shrug it off and deny everything. All the while keeping that dumb smile plastered all over his dumb, ugly face. I did it? I did? Yes. Ugh. It's funny how he kept denying any knowledge of sharing those pics with the setup. And when Chris showed him the chat logs, he came up with something even more ridiculous. Right. Yeah, you just want to send a picture, like I have a bunch of pictures of me. Right. So I wants to hit that. Oh, I get it. Just happened to share those photos by mistake. <laughs> oh, that's my bad, buddy. Got a totally innocent guy over here. Back in it, everybody. But uh, before you go, why the hell did you take them in the first place? Enjoy looking at your natural self, or did you perhaps have a ton of contacts to share those pics with? Grandma get one? Well, if you didn't catch any obvious sarcasm, what he said was a bold-faced lie, and Chris definitely wasn't buying it. Lies didn't stop there, though. Jason then went on about how lonely he was and how he constantly needed people around him. You know they make meet and greets in public, dude. You know, to this guy's credit,
credit, he desperately tried to wash his hands of the situation by saying that a friend is a friend regardless of age or gender. And when Chris decided to dig deeper, he'd said something totally unexpected. There's nothing wrong with that because to be honest, I have friends that are 16 to 30, we all hang out. The thing is that Jesse didn't have a problem meeting people of any age. What worries me the most is that when Jesse mentioned that he usually prefers meeting people in public places and doesn't randomly show up at someone's house. Which means I can't even fathom how many times he's done this before considering how confidently he said it. You've this is the thing that I would walk into someone's house. Anyway, Chris was done with him, but it's Jesse's final reaction that always gets me. Thank you for this actual experience, actually, because uh, it's pretty interesting, actually. Gotta be the only guy to thank Chris for catching him red-handed. That means he had no idea what was gonna happen next, and I can't even begin to tell you how happy I was to see that smile finally wiped off his face. We'll explain everything in a minute. Welcome to reality, dumpster scraps. With just one look at Chris, the next weirdo knew he was doomed, though. That being Keith Williams. Keith Williams was certain how his day was gonna end, but when he came face to face with Chris, he flat out refused to sit for an interview. Yeah, you see that there? He knew what was coming next, but that was just the beginning of his never ending rant. Because once Keith started speaking, Chris couldn't get a word in edgewise. I don't know. I just bored. Honestly, look at my. I just, you know. Just like that, without even Chris having to ask him anything, Keith went on and on about how stupid he was and how he wasn't there to do anything. Yeah, but that, yeah, but that, but that. Got so agitated and flustered that his story started changing every other minute. What's even funnier is that he claimed to not believe anything the setup said online. And yet here he was trying to meet someone he had absolutely no faith in. Uh, that's not a great start right there if you want Chris on your side, honestly. What's coming proved Keith was dim-witted as all get out, though. You drove by this house and saw police out front. Yeah. Yet you walked in here. Can you believe that? I actually saw another weirdo getting rounded up just outside the house not even 10 minutes ago, and yet he thought something like that wouldn't happen to him. This comment sums it up. Dumbest predator even rode by the cops arresting another predator and still came in. And that's why Keith earned the title of the dumbest moron who ever been caught on the show. But hey, wasn't entirely wrong in assuming the cops would have left. After all, who runs sting operations all day long, right? Well, Chris is who. Does this year after year, and weirdos like Keith line up almost on schedule for a meeting with him, only to be arrested right after. The loser right here, who went crazy the minute Chris started to read from the chat logs. So this big guy you see here is Dennis Coulson, and guess what he called himself? Well, check this out. Yeah, that's that's really the screen name he went by. Scooby-Doo at 101. You might find that funny. Let me tell you, though, this guy was anything but. He's going places. Not comedy clubs, but places. You see, this particular sting house was located in a remote area. Like, way out in the rural part of the country. And dude had a pretty hard time getting over there. Would that stop him from showing up? Of course not. This Scooby-Doo was on a real treasure hunt. A hunt he wouldn't stop until he finally arrived to get his Scooby snacks. I mean, he's coming in. So Dennis was excited to meet Emily, with whom he'd had a conversation just a few days earlier. Now, this guy was a little cautious, but again, his dark motives were much stronger than his fear of getting caught. Yeah, well, I can't get directions over there. Eventually, he entered the house after Emily called him over. I'm making some sweet tea. Oh, Why really? is it in here? I mean, how could he refuse some sweet tea from this cute little sweet beat, am I right? Of course, though, let's not forget that he didn't drive all this way for nothing. You see, this guy had a definite agenda he wouldn't back down from. And the level of comfort he displayed being in a random stranger's house at some late hour of the night? Pretty alarming. Guy had to have been doing this sort of thing before. Yeah, he was so relaxed that he even criticized her for how messed up her directions were. How would you even do that? Either way, Chris couldn't help but voice Dennis's thoughts when he said this. How goofed up her directions? were. You know, if somebody could give better directions, I'd have been here sooner. Come to think of it, it certainly doesn't seem like this jerk's first time. He was walking around the house so casually, looking for a quick bite to grab, joking about things. Eh, kinda like the actual Scooby-Doo. Honestly, just put in the forced laugh track and we're all good here. But then suddenly, the entire atmosphere changed. It was time for Chris to make his grand entrance, and now things weren't funny anymore. The seat right over there, I'm good, thank you. I'm going. You got lost, huh? Yeah, who are you? Yeah. Well, for Dennis at least. Us though, great. Yeah, that's Chris being savage. That one line was enough to make Dennis very uncomfortable. 
Chris wasn't just questioning him. He was making it clear that he knew what this Scooby-Doo was up to. And what did Dennis have to say? Uh, well, for some reason, this guy thought he had the authority to question Chris of all things. Yeah, what's, what's going on? Well, you tell me, you prick. That's exactly what we've been waiting to hear. But the audacity of this guy really took things to another level. Now, this guy had described in quite graphic detail every move he wanted to make. But it's the reason he gave for showing up around 1.42 a.m. on a Saturday night that surprised Chris. I don't know, I was just bored. Man. Just bored. Um, yeah. Oh no, the poor guy. He was just he was just bored, everybody. What better way to have some fun than to knock on random people's doors in the middle of the night looking for some uh, unsavory Scooby snacks, right? Eh, but you want to know what I think is fun? Oh God, stop. Okay. Just okay. one more. You say. Yeah, once Chris started reading from the chat logs, Dennis was practically begging Chris to stop going through them. <laughs> It was hilarious to watch this loser totally freak out about it too. Dude knew what was in there and he knew it wasn't good. So he wanted to make it seem like he was ashamed of it. But was he? No. No he wasn't. Either way, he did willingly show up at the house, so that should say more than enough. One second. Honestly, for a second, I thought he'd just snatch the papers away from Chris and rip them to pieces. Guy was pretty close to doing it, no doubt, and despite being caught red-handed, he still had the audacity to say this. He's what was going to happen to me tonight. I'm going to jail. It's my... What made him think he was in charge of the situation? Well, sadly for him, Chris wasn't buying his nonsense. And so he shut him down with another clever jab when he said this. Here's what I can tell you, Scooby-Doo. You don't have to call me Scooby -Doo. Yes, nobody can roast these jerks like Chris does. I mean, you can't say it isn't fun to watch. The kind of comebacks Chris has are so spontaneous and yet so clever, but I think wit isn't something this guy had in abundance. When the cameras came out, the dude came up with a brilliant idea. Internet. Now, you are obviously free to walk out of this house. Well, sorry, pal, you're done now. But Dennis tried to put on one last act before leaving for good. He tried to sweet talk Chris into thinking he was a good guy. Yeah, right, like any of us are gonna believe that. But his acting, I gotta admit, was pretty convincing, actually. It's stupid, I'm a stupid man. That's, I mean, I do apologize, it's a very stupid thing, me, thing for me. Better than his comedy. Well, duh, dude, of course it was a stupid move. A move that would land you in prison sooner rather than lighter. Anyway, now that we got you in cuffs on Dennis, let's move on to this next guy who was still living with his mama. Meet Donald Morrison. This dude was a man child of the highest order who was practically still swaddled by his mommy. Uh, but don't be fooled, because this guy is as bad as they come. He had absolutely no guilt, no remorse, nothing. Chris didn't even have to put any work into getting in to open up. Dude just spilled the beans before Chris even had a chance to start talking. My father tried to, wanted me to try to torture me with something they couldn't do anything. So. And you won't believe the confession that he made next. I met her in Michigan, and I took him. He took him. So basically what he was trying to say was that he did stuff like this pretty much all the time. It was totally normal for him. Now, why does that not surprise me at all? Either way, here's the kicker. It turns out he'd been caught doing the same thing before. I've met about a dozen of them online. Did you ever get in trouble for it? Well, I got in trouble because I met- Lessons learned, none. Only this time he had gotten himself into much deeper trouble. Well, it was only a matter of time before his true colors would start to show, and I guess that time had finally come. I was preparing for, cause she said that you know, she, I said, if you read, saw what I said, I said, if you want it, I will give it. As Chris continued to tighten the noose around his neck, Donald struggled to keep his cool. Now, make sure you keep an eye on him here, because things are about to get real interesting. To you, but I'm not going to force anything that you don't want. I'm not going to force myself on you. That doesn't make it legal, though. Oh, how gentlemanly of you not to force anything upon anyone. I mean, come on, are you even serious right now? And this is turning out to be way more disturbing than I expected. Worst part is, he was actually proud of not forcing forcing himself on others. Seriously? It's like the bare minimum, my dude. Either way, we're not done yet. When Chris continued to corner him, he finally and shamelessly admitted that he would have gone through with the entire thing if Chris had not been around. Pretty crazy confession, but for this show, not unsurprising as well. Not sure if he knew he was being phoned at the time, but to actually admit to something like that without even trying to hide the truth is absolutely insane. This guy got no shame at all. Well, let's see what was going through his mind. 
Oh, I know my mom's gonna t t take my computer and completely throw it. Yeah, all he cared about was what his mom would do with his computer. Would she throw it away? Would she hold on to it until he got his act together? And maybe have her delete the private files in there or burn it all together. That's really the only thing he was concerned about. Now, any sane person would be more concerned about getting arrested and facing the police and whatnot, but this freak? <laughs> nah, only law he saw any authority in was his mom's. Unfortunately, they don't grant access to computers or the internet when you're locked up behind bars. Please, on the right on. On the ground! On the ground! I'm what physical threat did at least at that time. But at least he was honest. Unlike this next guy who serves as a perfect example of a teacher gone bad. Let's give a warm welcome to Mike Manzi. Like any other loser we met on this show, this dude had a pretty elaborate plan for what he wanted to do with the sting house. Oh, you see, Manzi was used to being around students, which meant he knew exactly how to get them to open up. But for someone with so much confidence, the excuse he came up with was pretty lame, actually. Yeah. Well, I came over just to make sure that everything was fine. Everything was okay. Wow, how thoughtful, am I right? According to him, he drove all the way just to ensure everything was okay. Well, it was, until he showed up. But hey, humor him. Go along with his story for a minute. Might learn something. Either way, he was betraying himself as a concerned individual who was worried about the setup possibly falling into the wrong hands. And what kind of teacher are you again? A drama teacher? Because your life is great. Seriously, here's a simpler solution. Call the police, or contact her parents, or even just leave a message asking her to stay friends safe. Uh, but no, Manzi had to do it himself. How chivalrous. He kept pushing his dumb story until Chris began reading the chat logs. Only then did he realize he had gotten himself into some serious trouble. So what was the next course of action? To get out. And well, he was willing to do anything to do just that. May I please leave? Not I'm not. Yet. Okay. Not yet. I have some more questions for you. Will I be able to leave after your question? Did you blame? Sorry, buddy. Not this time. By this time, Manzi had lost every ounce of his composure and was beginning to panic. Everything was okay. Right. It really wasn't that far. I wanted to make sure that there was no, no, like, sh He was desperately trying to come up with an escape plan, but all hell broke loose when the cameraman decided to show up. And Manzi's reaction was totally unexpected. Please let me go home, oh, guys. No. Sir, Guys, it'd be best if you oh, went please. out this door. No, because I'm gonna get arrested. I know it's Of course this loser was in for a shock, but you know what makes this whole confrontation hilarious? He couldn't believe that he was face to face with THE Chris Hansen. I mean, he had the audacity to tell him this. I'm Chris Hansen. No, you're not. Yeah, fanboy alert here. Anyway, once the dust settled, Dew was in for yet another shocking revelation. He had no idea that his little tryst would hit the screen someday soon. And when Chris broke the news to him, Manzi started to throw a fit. Guys, oh, this is horrible. This is horrible. Yeah, he couldn't help but whine like a baby. But I think he already knew that his life wasn't gonna be the same anymore. Up next, we got this realtor who was looking for the wrong kind of real estate. Muhammad Abdallah came over to check something of great importance, and nope, it wasn't the property that he was interested in. Now, for some reason, I think this might have been his first rodeo. I mean, just look at the guy. He was already sweating bullets even before Chris made an entrance. Hi. Yeah, you can leave it open, it's fine. Well, 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 sorry, man. It's too late to regret your decision. However, the guy attempted to be clever by leaving the door ajar. Clearly, he was edging his bets ready to make a quick escape any time, but you and I both know he wouldn't get very far. You see, the moment Chris stepped into the scene, Mohammed knew he had to come up with a good excuse and he had to do it fast. But what he came up with, I don't even have the words to describe it. You think she owns the house? I would try yeah. to tell her what is it, and just yeah. that she say, come in. Come, Come in, in. and so you- Oh, so it's just that easy to get laid now, eh? Someone just calls you over while you're passing by, just walk in, just like that, no questions asked. Uh, I wish someone told me that in high school. I don't know, you guys, I don't think this dude has the slightest idea of how dating actually works. And when Chris finally burst his bubble, he had another ridiculous excuse locked and loaded, again though, thought of fast. The office at this time, I don't chat in the morning. You don't chat in the morning. Nope. Obviously this loser couldn't handle his own chats being read out loud, and he tried his best to put on a sorry face, and he ended up saying this. You know, I'm an Egyptian, I'm Muslim, I don't do this stuff. We'll lick you all. Hey, stop playing preacher, man. I mean, how does religion even remotely fit into this situation? He probably thought he could get away scot-free by putting on his holier-than-thou facade. Sod, but who was he trying to fool here? God? Not easy to do. Guy got a rude awakening when the camera showed up, capturing his shocked face. Allah doesn't want to talk to me anymore. What followed next was one of the craziest takedowns I've ever seen on the show. 
I mean, just look at it. They pretty much buried his head in the sand there. But the dude deserved every last bit of it. Now, with that satisfying video out of the way, let's move on to the next guy who was once again a teacher, but this time he wasn't planning on teaching anything. If there's one way I could describe James Rutherford, I'd say he was a hell of a desperate soul. I mean, just look at how he strolled into the house. Be right back. No, come here. Come here. Come here. Come here. Wait, that big smile he had on. I'll keep an eye on it, because it won't be there for long. What gets me is just how comfortable he was at the Sting House. For a second, it looked like he owned the damn place. However, things took a turn when Chris showed up with the transcripts ready to go. At that time, trust me, it looked like this loser was pretty mad at himself. I would never do anything. I don't know why I'm here. I mean, tell me that this doesn't piss you off. Not like that's a bad thing, innocent enough. I knew I shouldn't have come. I knew I shouldn't have come. Oh, you're damn right, bro. Why the heck did you come? It's scary to think that people like this are actually out there, tutoring kids and using it as a facade to do, uh, well, extra credit in layman's terms. Here's, maybe I should just stop. Maybe I should get counseling. Maybe I should get Yeah, that would be all for this guy. Time to say bye-bye to his teaching career. But dude wasn't ready to give it all up just yet. He decided to make one last attempt at redemption, and I really think he shouldn't have. I'm sorry, that would be fun. I, I know it's on TV. Today. Kiss it. Wow, that was not at all surprising. Guy tried his level best to get out of this messy situation, I'll give him that much. But that story isn't gonna fly anymore. Alright dude, time to show you the door. I mean, he really didn't want to leave. Chris asked him to leave, and yet the guy showed no interest in doing what he was told. Ironically enough, he's a teacher. He's supposed to be used to doing that kind of stuff. I mean, he probably knew what was going to happen, but that doesn't change a thing. Either you walk out or the cops walk on in, there's no happy medium for you. But either way, there was a happy medium for the police to oblige. Now, a fair warning, this next guy is absolutely nuts. Craziest thing was that none of us got to really see who the guy was. Yeah, for confidentiality's sake, or something like that, this dude who went by the screen name of Dark Hero 73 had his face blurred out for the entire episode. At first, I was pretty curious to see the person behind blatant admissions like this. I just got out of a mental institution a few- Hold on, is that some kind of justification for him to show up at random places asking for, uh, favors? Well, just wait until you hear what he had to say next. You should go see him. I'm just getting my life in order. You're gonna ruin my life. I'm sorry, what? You're claiming that Chris was the one who ruined your life? Dude, you did that yourself. Nobody forced you to come here, so quit the blame game, you dummy. Either way, the craziness doesn't stop there. You're the one who made the decision to come here. But I didn't know I was gonna wind. Just kept going on downhill from there, and he initially began with how he was just out for a drive, not planning anything significant. Maybe grab a burger or something. However, out of nowhere, he came up with this gem. I'm just a guy looking for a girlfriend. That's it. Are you kidding me? This was his idea of finding a girlfriend? Seriously? <laughs> Yeah, dude, I really think you need some help. And it gets worse. He had the audacity to blame Chris for missing his chance of getting a girlfriend. And it goes even further. Getting you to rant, practically shouting over Chris without giving him a chance to respond. And then he dropped this bombshell of a statement. Even though I didn't do anything. I think that's ridiculous. I think your story is a piece of sh**. absolutely no self-control, ran his mouth like a tornado. But at least he attempted to cover his ass, unlike the next individual who chose to reveal it all. And at this point, John Kennelly needs no introduction. Dude was just built different. I mean, literally, he showed up in his most natural form, taking the concept of openness quite literally. Whether it was out of innocence or ignorance, I, I got no idea, but this dude left the entire team shocked beyond belief. Well, he was undoubtedly embarrassed, but that was only because he found Chris in the house instead of his dream date. So you came here knowingly violating the law? you think that encounter was the end of this story, wait till you see what happened the next day. I have been in television for 24 years. I just came to get something to eat. Yeah, the dude didn't actually plan to meet another setup at a fast food joint. But thankfully, this time around, he was completely clothed. But you know what? Chris decided to dress him down. I don't eat. even know what to ask you first. I just came to get something to eat. The loser couldn't even lie with a straight face. And this time, Chris decided to show him down with some legit proof. I've got the chat log again. Well, too bad. No matter what he had to say, once again, nobody was buying it. No, I can't, John. I can't do that. That's their job, is to record video and audio. This is back when the police weren't yet involved in the sting. 
somehow cannily managed to drive away, leaving behind one of the most shocking episodes ever aired on national TV. Pretty much scot-free. So whether it's Dark Hero or Kennelly, these guys clearly needed some professional help. I can only hope they got it. What if a doctor decided to join in on the fun? See, this doctor's office was closed for the day. I think I'm actually gonna turn my sixth movie. Either way, this jerk was ever so casually helping himself to a drink with a damn doctor. Now, for a doctor, I think Maurice Wollon was pretty clumsy. Just looking to make a mess of the place. Self to a drink. I can't. Oh, jeez. So where are you coming from? the guy wasn't a surgeon. Anyway, it looked like the nervousness of this little date was getting to him. And just as he started to look around for a town to wipe himself down, BAM! Body of the entire crew. What did he do next? Well, he literally ran for his life. No points for guessing that one, guys. I gotta take off. What? Sir? Sir? Yeah. I need to talk to you for a minute. Obviously, he didn't make it too far, and his reaction to getting caught, though, was downright hilarious. Dude, so what are you so mad about? Just look at that. He literally destroyed his own sunglasses. This is all his own fault. Again, though, nobody forced you to show up at the Sting house. They didn't do that to you, Dark Hero or anybody. You're the one that did that to yourself. After that little meltdown, he started whining like a little baby, too. <laughs> Oh man, I wasn't doing anything! Get his keys. Jeez, this guy's giving me a headache. Let's move on to the next one. Maybe after I go grab an aspirin or something. Either way, this certain someone was pretty hungry, and I mean like really, really hungry, and also had absolutely no manners whatsoever. Allow me to introduce you to David Schumacher. What's you tell me what's going on? Your dad or something? What are you doing here? I'm Dave. The moment he stepped into the house, he started munching on those cookies without a care in the world. Well, you go ahead and enjoy them while you can, sport, because it might be the last time you eat anything decent for a long while. When he fell cornered, he decided to play his trump card. Like law enforcement. I happen to know law enforcement. You do. So you're an expert in this area. Yeah, do you claim to know someone in law enforcement? Like, that was supposed to make any difference. It's like the TCAP version of I know the manager. And it probably don't actually know the manager at this point. Funny enough, he only got dumber and dumber from there. Is this, is this some kind of hold up, man? You got a warrant? Cause like an actual Karen. Oh, uh, yeah. Not only did he have some friends in high places, but he also seemed to be quite the expert at rattling off some major legal jargon. Yeah, the dude knew the law like the back of his hand, apparently. So we thought, maybe. Either way, I hope he knows how many laws he's breaking by sitting here across from Chris and the rest of the team. Because no matter how hard I try, I couldn't make sense of what he was attempting to say after a point. I, I don't know what kind of um rap y'all got on, on people, but maybe I can get the whole story. You see, no matter how much drama he was going to bring to the table, it wasn't going to make a difference. What's more, he had his sister drive him all the way to the Sting house. And I mean, that's crazy. If you know the law as well as you think you do, you may have just made her an accomplice. Ugh, gonna be peeved when she finds out. However, now it's time to meet Corey Edgar, the moron who was scared to even enter the house. Either way, would his fears get the better of him and save him from landing in the hot seat? Uh, no, of course not. This is TCAP we're talking about here. The guys who show up at the Sting house check their common sense at the door. Yeah. Hmm. You walk around. Come in. <laughs> Sometimes in the internet chat room. So it looks like at least some remote part of his consciousness was trying to hold him back from crossing the threshold. But after all the confusion he put his poor brain through, he finally walked in and what did he see? You are a suspicious guy, Rick. Oops. Corey's detective work seemed to bear fruit. Just as he was snooping around trying to get a good look at every nook and cranny, bam. Finally laid his eyes on what looked like a camera. Gotta give it to Chris, though. The way he sweet-talked to him and kept him from bolting was crazy. And well, my man had no other choice but to walk right back in to face the worst confrontation of his entire life. I did not want this to happen. I didn't do anything. Please have a well, yeah, sure, he didn't really do anything, but your chat logs, well, they're more than enough to drag your whiny ass back to jail. Crazy how we started to whine about how it was Chris's problem, and like, let me put whine in all caps and bold for you, really emphasize that there. I mean, honestly, though, who does talk like this? I, this is wrong. I, I clearly said, please leave me alone. Do not message me. Anyway, he went on to pour himself a glass full of the drink on offer and took his sweet time finishing it. While the crew was in a hurry to send him packing, Corey was chilling out trying to make his last few minutes of freedom as memorable as possible. But the guy at least had enough sense to know what was in store for him, so he started to walk to the door. And we all know what happened next. Put your hands on your head. 
Yeah, good riddance. So, these were some of the guys who were caught on the show and thought it would be a good idea to get snippy with Chris. If you can think of some other moments that I missed, make sure to drop them in the comments down below. And before you leave, make sure to smack that like, subscribe, and turn on my post notifications. And also, don't forget to check out my latest video right here, Crazier. See you all next time.